Okay. Welcome to the video. What we're going to do here is we are going to install Murmur, which is the server side of Mumble, into a FreeNAS jail. Uh, the procedure I'm outlining here is, is essentially exactly the same for FreeBSD. So if you're running FreeBSD, just ignore these parts where I talk about FreeNAS or jails, and you should be fine. Uh, we're going to use a package install instead of a ports install. That's not really the best way to do it, but it's, it, it literally is at least 20 times easier, and I figure we're looking for easy here. And then when we're done actually installing the software, I am going to show you right on the screen here how you're going to prime the database for the Murmur server and how you'll be able to log in as a super user without a problem. This is a, a definitely a, a bone of contention because I get a lot of questions on the forum on FreeNAS about how that particular last part is done. So you, you'll see me do that for you. Okay, uh, with the jails in FreeNAS, uh, the very first time you do a jail of a given type, it has to download several hundred megabyte a jail image from a very slow CDN that Jordan and Matt have selected for reasons only they know. And um, so yeah, this is going to, in subsequent jails though, it only it only clones the existing uh, image of the jail and only takes five seconds. So for me it's going to take five seconds because I've already pre-done pre this for you yesterday. Uh, but for you it might take a while to create this first jail. So when you first click on jails in FreeNAS, you'll have to do some basic configuration of where your jails are going to be stored. This is all outlined in the FreeNAS documentation, and I've assumed that you've done that. Now that you're at the point where you can add jails, you go ahead and you click Add Jails. Okay. Okay. And you are going to, um, let's call it Murmur Jail. The type of jail is going to be standard. Make sure you change that. The IP address that it gives you. See, this is interesting how it does this. It gives you the first available IP address. And how does it know what's available? Well, you can see down here it has pinged some likely IP addresses and has discovered that they were in use. On 3, there was no response, so it, it assumes that 3 is open. So if you know what you're doing, make sure that that is a correct IP address for you. If you don't know what you're doing, then it's almost certainly the case that that's a correct IP address for you because you wouldn't have been messing with anything. So I'm going to take off the V image and the vanilla, and you'll notice most of these options do gray out here at the top. Okay. So I'm going to click OK, and if you've never made a standard jail before, this will take about an hour. If you have created a standard jail before, this will take about 30 seconds. So you can see we have the 30 seconds version. Okay. The very first thing I'm going to do, this jail now exists and it's running, okay? I'm going to highlight the jail. I can click this little shell guy down here. And now we're in sort of this little sort of uh, quick and dirty hacker's shell. That's just not good enough for, for, for sitting here working on a few files. So what we're going to do is we are going to get uh, this jail configured to use a proper SSH login. So I'm going to set a password, P-A-S-S-W-D. Type the password that you want twice. I'm not going to use a very secure one because this is just a demonstration. Um, now I need to do PKG upgrade so that we are not only using the right software repositories, but we are also using the right version of PKG itself. So you can see, in fact, it's going to update my PKG from whatever was in the template to 137, which is a, a very important update that you're going to want to do. Okay, I assume we're not upgrading from the old package format as it's set above, but I'm just going to type that up. It looks fine. Um, make sure that when you type this, you see this line with package ng equals yes. Very important. If you don't see that, um, then you probably don't want to proceed, and you probably want to uh, uh, Google for what you should do next. Okay, so it looks like we're online. I am going to package install nano. Nano is a very uh, yes, do that is a very very straightforward and easy text editor that, that handles things um, very quick. It's done. We have just installed nano on FreeBSD. The first thing I'm going to do with nano is I'm going to go into this file. Okay. At the bottom there, you can see the basic nano commands. There are two things I want to change. I'm going to find them in the file using Control-W. Uh, Control-W uh, obviously tells you where things are located. 
First thing I want to do is I want to permit the root login. So I will look for the word root. Here it is. I'm going to unhash this. And I'm going to change this no to a yes. I'm going to control W again. And I'm going to search for password because it does not allow password authentication out of the box. And obviously we want it. So I'm going to do the same thing to that. Okay. Then I'm going to do my control X down here to exit. Do you want to save it? Yes, I do. Okay. Now I'm going to do two quick things here. SysRC SSHD underscore enable equals yes. This means that you want the service to be on by default in this jail. Okay. And I'm going to actually uh, start the service with service SSHD start. And you see that's good news. You are now logged. Uh, you now have the SSH uh, daemon started and running and ready to accept connections. So we can sort of, um, did I set the passwords? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, we can get out of this guy like so. Okay. Now I'm going to use my SSH uh, client to log into this jail. I use something called Bitvise up here. If you, most of you are probably using Putty. Let me tell you something. Switching from Putty to Bitvise is like switching from, for me, it was like switching from, you know, Wonder Bread to Panera Bread. So I would suggest giving that a look over. Okay. Um, let us log into this jail then. So this jail IP is 192.1. And you can use Putty. If you want to use Putty, don't let me talk you out of it. Have a nice time with your Putty. Okay, I'm not trying to get you to get rid of your puppy. But I'm going to use this big five stack. And then my very insecure password that I chose, I'm going to log in. Okay. Except for this session. Okay, so here we are. This is our jail. We are logged into our jail. And now that... Um, and you can see we've installed Dano and stuff like that. Now look at this. Look how easy this is going to be. I'm going to type package install Murmur. Okay. Now Murmur requires... Murmur itself uh, is very easy to get. Um, these other things that are in here, some of these guys like uh, Boost is in here somewhere, I think. And uh, Python and Perl and... And these QT4 things, these take a long time to build. If, so if we did this with force, we'd be here a long time waiting for those. But as it is, these are just going to come in as if by magic. So Murmur and all the things necessary to uh, run Murmur are coming on down for us. And it will only take a moment for all of this stuff to come in. And now we're getting an install. This is probably chopping off for you. Don't you see it that way? Okay, so you just wait for all that to, uh, to come out. Okay. Um, ah, there we go. That's better. Okay, so you can certainly see that. Now that we have done all that, you'll see that all of this stuff, including Murmur itself, is in there. Now this has done a few things for you. There's a user now called Murmur that has been put into your jail. Uh, there's this file in user local Etsy. Uh, hmm. There is not a file in user local Etsy. Why not? That's very strange. There was a file yesterday in user local Etsy. What did I do? Huh. Well, I don't know what I typed before, but you can see here in user local Etsy that there's a murmur.ini. Okay? And we are going to set all of that stuff up. But the first thing that you have to do, so let's go ahead and nano into murmur.ini. Okay, this is where you where you set up your 
Murmur server to have the properties that you want. I want to draw your attention to this line here, database var slash db murmur murmur.sqlite. If that is not there, or if that area is not writable, you're not going to be able to do anything. As it comes out of the box, that area is not there, and that area is not writable. So let us go ahead and stick that right in there right now. Okay. So we go to var, we go to db, look at this. There's no murmur there. We're going to have to make it like this. And furthermore, look who owns Murmur. Root. We need Murmur to own Murmur. So I'm going to change the user owner to Murmur, the group owner to Murmur, and that's going to apply to the Murmur directory. Okay? Just like that. Okay? That looks pretty decent, right? Let's go back to user local. Actually, let's go into that Murmur directory. And we are going to nano user local. Let's see, Murmur.ini from in here. Let's set this all up. Right. This is for a basic install. If you're running a Murmur server, ostensibly you know what you're doing. So I'm not going to spend too much time explaining everything I'm doing. I don't give a damn about this. I'm going to turn it off. Don't give a damn about this. I'm going to turn it off. Oh, no, that's fine, that's fine. And, uh, okay, bring this is awesome. We're on port 64738. You can change it to whatever you want. Bandwidth. Okay. Max. Okay, I don't like logging to the database, so I'm going to turn this to minus one. I do like allowing HTML, so I'm going to uncomment that. Uh, let's see. Ah. So you read this, if Murmur started as root, which user should it switch to? I've already showed you that there is a special Murmur user, so that's uh, what we want to do. Okay, this looks pretty good. This should do us. I'm going to exit that and save that. Okay. Now, this is how I'm going to set the password for the super user. What you type is you type murmur d minus, and by the way, notice that I'm in the var db murmur directory. That's important. Because this will do this potentially in whatever uh, working directory you're in. Okay, so be in this directory. And what you're going to do is murmur d minus soup w and whatever password you want. Um, how about abc123? Okay, and you can see that this is going to create now a database with this particular super user password in it. And sure enough, in this directory uh, is a file. Sure enough, in this directory is a file called murmur.sqlite. But now notice, the owner is root. And if the owner is root, then the murmur username will not be able to make changes to this file. So we're going to have to fix that. Let's just chown that. So we're going to chown murmur, murmur.sqlite. Okay. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think we're probably in business here. So now what we're going to do to test this out, let's try to start up our Murmur server and cross our fingers. So we're going to type service, Murmur, one start. Okay, that's a very good sign. If the only thing you see is starting Murmur, you're in good shape. If you type top, you can see Murmur up there right on your uh, list of uh, processes that are running. So this is very, very, very good. I think we're all set. Here's what you have to do. This is the procedure now for getting yourself logged in, okay, and uh, as the super user, and it's it's somewhat non-trivial, okay. All right, so you can see that I have already anticipated that we would have uh, a Murmur server on this uh, on this IP address, okay. So I'm going to log in, okay, to that server. Here it is. Green as is awesome. Remember, we put that in the INI. First thing you want to do is you want to register yourself. Okay. 
because I'm going to become the super user because this is my server. Okay. Now I'm going to disconnect when I reconnect to my server here. I'm going to change my username to super user with that capitalization. I think the capitalization still matters. Uh, and I'm going to put in my password, which I think was ABC123, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and let's log in. Good. I'm the super user. Now, as the super user, you will find when you right-click on this top line, you will find that you can edit. And we're going to go to Groups. We're going to go to Admin. And for some reason, I don't realize uh, on Windows when you do this you'll see the users you could add to this. I'm not seeing it here. I don't know why. So I'm just going to manually add it like that. Click OK. And disconnect. Now go ahead and I'm going to change this back to my name. Don't need a password anymore because this is all certificate based, right? So now when I connect, I should be, yeah, if you can do this edit thing, then you are the server administrator. So there it is. You know, you can add your channels or whatever you want to do. And uh, there, we should, there it is. I'm, I'm switching to your channels. By the way, if you if you like this skin that I'm using, uh, you can search for uh, Mumble Skins and you'll, you'll find it. Um, it's out there. It's fairly. It's new in the past uh, half year or something like that. Um, of course, root is not a very nice name for this server. So what I'm going to do when I do my final maintenance task here. So here, let's go back into this window. Um, let's go ahead and edit that uh, uh, I file again. Uh, this thing here. There's a root. Where is it? Register, register name. You can switch this to green ass, base, whatever you want. Uh, Uncomment that one. Okay, that be like that. Uh, then I change the name of that main channel to what we want. Now, what I'm going to do, since I'm happy with this setup, I'm going to do service one, uh, service murmur one stop. So that will stop that service. Okay, Murmur is now offline. You won't be able to go and look. You'll see there's no ping response anymore. See that? It is totally empty. Okay. Now that you've done that, uh, what you need to do is you need to do sysrc uh, Murmur. Let's see. I can never remember what it is. Murmur. If we do start, it won't let me. And it'll say I have to set Murmur enable. So sysrc. Murmur underscore enable equals equals yes. Okay, good. That's it. This jail will now start Murmur every time it starts. Okay, that's it. You are done. Um, I don't actually expect that I'll need to SSH into this jail, so I might disable the SSH listener if you want to, but I think we are in shape now, and let me show you exactly how this is going to work. Let's go ahead and stop the jail. So this is just like you were rebooting, and you can see my my SSH client here is not going. I'm going to restart this jail, and you're going to see that murmur comes right up in this jail. Okay, the jail has started. I'm going to go back to my um, Mumble, and sure enough, here he is, and I'm going to connect, and there it is. We are a Freenet-based Murmur. We're an awesome channel. Okay, everything looks pretty good, and um, you can uh, you can put this uh, with the proper port forward. You can put this right on the internet, and this will work just fine. You could log into this right now. And you can always see here that you're using FreeBSD and so on. So you're in good shape. And that is how you do a basic Murmur server on FreeBSD. Okay. Thanks for listening. I'm in the FreeNAS forums if you need more help or the IRC channel.